What advice would you give him for prolonging his career? I don't need to give him advice. He's Superman. <laughs> All right. It is Panthers week. The Carolina Panthers coming to Heinz Field. And in case you have not heard, it's a short week. Feels like we keep saying that all of the time. The Steelers were out on the practice fields this afternoon here at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex for the first time this week. Joining me now is Bob Lariola to talk about the short week, Ben's day, just about everything possible. And the weekend team, off. Yes. Uh, <laughs> let, you know, working for the weekend oh, is definitely okay. in play yes, for yes, this one. Absolutely. Yeah, first practice of the week just wrapped up. Coordinators are speaking now. Uh, there is not a practice report just yet. Ben spoke this morning. The Steelers will practice again tomorrow. That is close to the media, then game on Friday. So a lot going on in a short period of time, but same for the Panthers, as Coach Tomlin said yesterday. And they have to travel. They do. Um, and that, that always makes it a little bit more difficult for the road team on a Thursday night. And, you know, Missy, a lot of times these Thursday night games, especially lately, have been real stinkeroos in terms of uh, for the fans uh, having the game to watch. But this one, uh, I think, is going to be pretty good. The Steelers 5-2-1. and one. The Carolina Panthers are 6-2. and two. Uh, So this should be pretty interesting, pretty well-played uh, game, competitive anyway. All right. As I mentioned, it is Ben's day. We got a chance to hear from quarterback Ben Roethlisberger earlier today in the locker room lab. So let's go over some of the highlights from his media availability. You know, one of the realities, you know, we talked a little bit about it uh, this this short week, but I'm just going to give you I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of uh, what the Steelers have had to go through. Uh, the game against the Ravens ended. Uh, the team got on the charter flights, came back to Pittsburgh. The plane landed, I don't know, around 7:30. Uh, then Monday, uh, you know, you report for treatment if you need it. There was a team meeting in the afternoon, and then coaches probably spent uh, most of the rest of the night going uh, and, and formulating the game plan. Then, you know, you're at Tuesday, which is today, and it's really your only opportunity for a real practice, quote unquote, real practice. Uh, you can't be in pads because the players' bodies still really haven't recuperated from uh, the game on Sunday, and you're trying to get in uh, Wednesday and Thursday of a regular week's work uh, on a Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, there's going to be uh, a little like of a walkthrough Friday type schedule. And, you know, while the players' bodies may have healed a little bit more, one more day removed from the game against the Ravens, you can't do too much on-field work because then the next day, you know, they have to play against the Carolina Panthers. And Mike Tomlin was talking about, from the coaching st staff standpoint, what you, you kind of have to do. You still have to try and cover it all, but the depth that you would normally get into, the detail that you would get into in terms of the game plan and how you want the players to react to that plan, you kind of have to gloss over some of that stuff. And, uh, you know, so, but as he said, both teams uh, are under the same time schedule. And so in that point, it's fair. Probably the toughest part is the, the physicality of the game before. Um, playing Baltimore, everyone knows that that's going to be one of the most physical games of the year. So, um, you know, got a couple of days to get ready for another physical team. So what's the adjustment? Can you, uh, rest. Can you, can you fast forward recovery? <laughs> no, unfortunately. Uh, just try to do what you can and get as, as healthy as you can. All right. And playing off of the short week in terms of the game plan, one thing that quarterback Ben Roethlisberger said that is useful is using the no huddle in terms of the Steelers offense. It's something that Ben has been successful with for the past few years and very successful in terms of the Steelers this particular season. Ben said they did a lot of it actually in Baltimore against the Ravens in that 23 to 16 win. Here's more from Ben on using that on Thursday night against the Panthers. You know, we'll be able to throw some stuff, uh, some new things in there, but but not like a typical uh, work week or, you know, game plan week where you have a lot of things. Uh, so we'll have to rely some on the no huddle and some things that we've done uh, over the, the weeks and years. Ben, why does no huddle work on short weeks? Is that just you reading what you're seeing? Um, yeah, I mean, with the familiarity of it, you know, not having, we've been doing no huddle stuff in those plays for a long time. So um, not throwing something new, just the, the understanding of it. 
You know, when it comes to the Carolina Panthers, names like Cam Newton and Christian McCaffrey, Greg Olson, uh, they're familiar to fans. But the Carolina defense has been playing pretty well this season so far as well. And where the Panthers defense solid most places, but really where it's has been making a difference for the team so far this year is in the area of takeaways. A couple of weeks ago, the Steelers played the Cleveland Browns who led the NFL in takeaways. Carolina is not that far behind with 15 so far, and they, more importantly, even than the number of takeaways, they're a plus eight. And so when Carolina is a plus in the turnover ratio so far this season, they're five and oh, when they're either even or a plus in the turnover ratio, uh, the record is 6-1. and one. So I think for the Steelers, one of the keys is going to be certainly not turn the ball over, but if they can possess it and move it down the field, they might be able to take advantage of the one real weakness of the Carolina defense so far this season, and that's red zone. Carolina is 31st in the NFL in red zone defense. They've allowed touchdowns 80% of the time teams have penetrated their 20-yard line. You know, seeing some of that, some man stuff, but but really it starts with their two linebackers, um, Luke and Davis. I mean, they're just they're, they're so good. It is among the good pairings that you've ever seen at, at linebacker. Oh, absolutely. Um, Coach Tomlin compared them to um, he said Erlacher and Briggs uh, from Chicago, and yeah, they're they're something. They're something else. All right, and the first time Ben Roethlisberger went to rookie James Washington in Baltimore, well, you see it right there, that is what happened. Ben had a few choice words with number 13 following that, but like Ben always does, he goes back to his guys if he has their trust. This was about four or five plays later in that second drive for the Steelers offense in the first quarter. He is a rookie, as we have talked about number, a number of times, did not get a helmet the last game, got one this week in terms of Justin Hunter not getting one and being inactive against the Ravens. He did a bunch of phenomenal things in training camp, known for his combat catches. In terms of Ben giving him his trust and being a guy that he can rely on, he said, yes, maybe he is tough on rookies, but he said James Washington takes it to heart as a hard worker, and he said hopefully they can work things out. I think for him, the, the toughest part is playing one side. Um, you know, in college, he played one, one side of the ball. And uh, I don't think colleges, if you watch college football, uh, I, I feel like offenses are being simplified uh, in the sense that they're all looking to the sideline. They're all, it's, it, it seems to be, you know, screens. They're not running a whole route tree. It doesn't appear to, it, uh, to be that way. So I think they come in at a, quarterbacks and receivers come in at a disadvantage in the NFL level. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's different. You know, but I think he's he's learning and, and he's not asking questions, which is a good thing. All right, and that is a quick recap of Ben's day. Labs, thanks so much for joining me. We're gonna take a quick break. Coming up, Mike Prasuda has a scouting report on the Panthers. And we also have your SNU keyword. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Due to the short week preparing for Thursday night football, today we will do our Sirius XM scouting report. And joining me for that this week is Mike Prasuda. Thanks, Missy. Is it a short week? I hadn't heard much about that. But uh, I have heard a lot about the Carolina Panthers and their read option misdirection offense. You may have uh, remembered that the Baltimore Ravens dabbled in that stuff with Lamar Jackson. I'm here to tell you what Carolina does with mixed misdirection makes Baltimore look bland. Let's get right to it and uh, take a look at a 32-yard completion to Christian McCaffrey. That's DJ Moore, the wide receiver, motioning into the backfield. Fake pitch, fake screen, throw it back the other way to McCaffrey. He catches the ball nine yards behind the line of scrimmage, but he's got a lot of open space. He's got blocking downfield, and when that fails, there's a little ball fake, play action fake, fake right, throw it left. Watch the hurdle. Christian McCaffrey can uh, pretty much do whatever needs to be done on a football field. Next up, next play, the Panthers are at it again. Uh, this time, they fake the handoff to McCaffrey, but do the old jet sweep action. And uh, it's another 32-yard game. This time, Moore gets the ball. He knows what to do with it. Uh, there you go. Follow the fullback. No, don't follow the fullback. Follow the ball. Uh, don't get caught up in where you think it's going to go. Pay attention and be in your gap. Otherwise, these guys are going to make you look silly. 
Uh, last but not least, we've seen the uh, fake jet sweep. We've seen the jet sweep. Now we're going to see the play action jet sweep. Oh, wait, it's a reverse. They've added a wrinkle. Look at everybody down the field. Uh, this is Curtis Samuels who gets into the open space and just keeps running. Tampa Bay looks silly chasing this guy all over the field. Uh, everybody for the Panthers gets downfield to block. You even see Cam Newton. Watch number one. He's leading the charge. Look at the big guy. Superman. Is he going to block? No, he's just going to go out of bounds. But they don't need him to block on this play. The misdirection does its thing, and Carolina's in the end zone. Of course, two can play at this game. Here's Tampa Bay. Play action, bootleg, throw to the tight end. O.J. Howard. Watch number 29, Mike Adams. He takes his eyes off his man and looks for the ball. Whoops. He's not even in the frame when the ball goes into the end zone. These guys can be fooled as well. Uh, good penetration, but not good enough. Touchdown for Tampa Bay. Now, uh, moving on to a Cam Newton highlight of highlights. There's a little play action bootleg, and he is gone. When you see the angle from behind the play, you're going to see uh, Terrell Suggs crash down on this. You're going to see cornerback Jimmy Smith crash down on this. You're going to see safety Eric Weddle crash down on this. Cam Newton has a ball, and so does that kid. Look at all the Ravens jumping that inside fake. Cam Newton, a walk-in touchdown. You never know uh, what this guy's going to come up with, but it's going to be spectacular. All right, just because it's a short week doesn't mean you're going to get away from agree to disagree. That's right. We are back getting ready for Thursday Night Football, the show with the motto. I'm All right. right. He's, He's wrong. wrong. Where's the baby? That baby was cute. Uh, all right. Anyways, first statement. Thursday's key is Christian, not Cam. Pursuita, you're up first. I'm going to disagree. Is it a short week? It's really? A sh I hadn't heard anything week. about that. Uh, Let's go. I I'm going to respectfully disagree. I think it's a great uh, topic for discussion. But uh, as versatile as Christian McCaffrey is, and, and as much as the Carolina offense revolves around Christian McCaffrey, you know, giving it to him, handing it off, throwing it to him, uh, Cam Newton's still the trigger guy. He's the guy handling the ball. He's the guy orchestrating all those hidden ball tricks and misdirection. And oh, by the way, he's still Superman. Uh, he's got a banged up shoulder. He's not throwing the ball down the field uh, the way he is capable of or has been previously. And uh, maybe the, with Torrey Smith, if he, the deep threats just aren't there. But he is uh, becoming quite a maestro with that Carolina offense. That guy, even if you know where he's going and you know he's got the ball in his hands, he's going to be really hard to tackle. I love Christian McCaffrey, but I kind of fear Cam Newton. Um, I'm going to agree with the statement and disagree with you, and there's nothing respectful about that, as there never is. Um, Christian McCaffrey is the guy who creates – all of the situations uh, that Cam Newton has been taking advantage of when it comes to opposing defenses. If he didn't have Christian McCaffrey there, Cam Newton I mean, then the defense would be concentrating more on Cam Newton and therefore he wouldn't be all of those things that he has been so far this season. Super Cri Christian McCaffrey, <laughs> maybe Batman, definitely not Superman. 49 catches, 502 yards rushing, this is a guy who's the, the Swiss Army knife kind of uh, offensive weapon. You know, he wears that his, teal. He kind of looks and, like Aquaman. Get it? <laughs> See what I did there? Hit the bell. Thank well, you. I, Thank you. We're really running out of time on this one. Let's go. But uh, Cam Newton without Christian McCaffrey is Cam Newton from last year, and that was hardly Superman. All right, all right, all right, all right. Statement number two. Bell begins as a backup. If he shows, meaning how would you guys use him in labs? You can go first. Uh, I'm going to agree with the statement. Uh, I'm, I'm riding with James Conner right now. The way things are going, uh, the, the, um, the feeling and the, the synchronicity that James Conner has with the, with the offensive lineman, with the quarterback. Uh, I'm just not going to mess up with what I think is a, a, a pretty smooth operation right now. However, uh, Le'Veon Bell is still a talented and can be a valuable addition to this offense. If James Conner needs a rest, Le'Veon goes in. If James Conner gets injured, Le'Veon goes in. If James Conner suddenly is uh, not what he has been through the, first be by games, <laughs> through the first game of the season, first eight games of the season, Le'Veon goes in. 
but I'm not messing with the chemistry that I have right now and the production that I'm getting from James Conner. All right, Pursuita, what do you think? I disagree. I disagree on a couple of levels. Number one, Synchronicity was not even close to the best song ever recorded by the police. <laughs> Number two, I don't care about chemistry. I don't care what's been tweeted, what's been said, what's been written, what, uh, what has occurred previously. I am looking forward. And uh, Le'Veon Bell, if he comes back, he wouldn't be a backup. He'd be what he was presumably last year. That was an all-pro utility guy, underlying utility. Let's assume... Big assumption, but let's assume he reports and he's in shape at some point. Now you can line him up in the slot. You can line him up out wide. You can use James Conner and Le'Veon Bell in the same formation. Uh, right now you got uh, Ryan Switzer in the backfield. No offense to Ryan Switzer. I think Le'Veon Bell would be more effective there with Conner in the slot or wide. Right now you got Darius Hayward Bay getting snaps at wide receiver. No offense to Darius Hayward Bay's special teams play. I'll go with Conner and Bell in some way, shape, or form. Are you going to assume that Le'Veon Bell's all in? Yes, I am. Big all assumption. Right. All right. I'm I big on assumptions agree. these days. I, I agree with you know both what they of you say guys. About oh, assumptions. here we go. I'm going to keep <laughs> ringing this bell. I agree with both of you guys on the last statement. I'm not taking any plays, carries, or passes away from James Conner. But if Le'Veon Bell shows up, he is in shape. You got to find a way to utilize him in some form or fashion. So, so therefore, it's a so short I week. I win. Biggest I word the in the English language. I am if. the winner. That is going to do <laughs> it. Uh, or agree to disagree. We both I'll be watching you a way better police this. song than Synchronicity. That's it. We're done. We'll see you next week for Agree to Disagree.